Hello, my name is Ben with Outliers Overland, and today I'm coming to you from headquarters in Seward, Alaska. Welcome to 8 Things You Do Not Know About 4x4 Off-Road Truck Campers. Firstly, you might also hear them referred to as overlanders or expedition vehicles. So what is a 4x4 off-road truck camper? It's a 4x4 beast that can handle itself in the best and worst of conditions. It's a truck designed for long journeys and crossing international borders. It's a camper that creates a sustainable travel lifestyle. It's a place to call home. In the end, it's a vehicle that will take you beyond your wildest dreams. Now, before we get started, please visit our website, outliersoverland.com, for newsletters, increased engagement with us, and resources for travelers. We are also producing a documentary of our travels here on the North American continent, and it's called Over the Land, North America. Stay tuned. It's coming out in 2021. Now, let's jump into the list and explain more about these fascinating vehicles. Number one, where do these trucks come from? Well, the 4x4 expedition vehicle style of camper is far more common in Europe, and most of the ones you see here in the United States are from there. And then a very high percentage of those are actually from Germany. So we have to give a shout out to all our German friends out there. Another noteworthy thought, the Mitsubishi Fuso Canter chassis, like our vehicle, is very common in Australia, and we look forward to crossing paths with you guys when we get over there. Number two, it's just a motorhome. Yes, 4x4 expedition vehicles are nothing more than a motorhome with a mutation and on steroids. So despite the extreme appearance of 4x4 expedition vehicles, once you get on the inside, you're going to find a lot of very common RV components and accessories, such as the ceiling, fan, light fixtures, water pump, etc. Number three, they are not all million dollar rigs. Dare I say, a do-it-yourselfer with a large garage and plenty of tools is capable of building their own off-road truck camper. Now with this route, one could weld together a subframe, assemble one of the camper body kits, choose a modest chassis, and be wheels on the road traveling for under $150,000. And for the record, just so you know what is out there, we bought our used, new to us, 2007 Mitsubishi Fuso Expedition Vehicle for $88,000. Number four, they are not mass produced junk. Most expedition vehicles are custom builds, either through a boutique small manufacturer or a do it yourselfer. They are well designed to balance weight, utilize space, and increase serviceability. Now combine that with a 100% enclosed camper box, and you have the exact opposite of a drafty mainstream motorhome. And on a side thought, being completely enclosed makes you more resistant to rodents. Now, when it comes to frames, a good expedition vehicle is built on a subframe. So what is that? Well, most motorhomes are essentially mounted directly to the frame of the vehicle. Well, on expedition vehicles, there is a subframe and a three point system in the middle. And what this does is it allows the camper to move independently from the chassis, which increases performance on and off road. It also looks really cool on video. Number five, a good expedition vehicle is an off grid camping machine. They are commonly equipped with solar panels, lithium battery banks, a generator, and low draw 12 volt appliances. Some are even single fuel source, meaning the engine shares the same fuel with the components inside. Now you combine those with a large water tank, composting or cassette toilet, and you have a vehicle that can take you off grid until you're ready to come back on. 
Number six, expedition vehicles are designed for extreme cold weather camping. A well-insulated camper mounted to a 4x4 truck chassis is an unstoppable force. There are two common types of walls for the camper's habitat. First, like ours, which is a steel frame and aluminum walls with insulation. It's a time-proven and durable design, but the weak link comes with thermal transfer, meaning metal conducts hot and cold from the outside to the inside. This is definitely an undesirable trait when it comes to metal framed campers because it can cause condensation, which if left unchecked could lead to mold. Well, it's 2020 now. What is the desired material for your camper habitat? Well, that would have to be composite. They come in two forms, honeycomb and sandwich panels, but they are lightweight and offer far superior performance compared to the predecessing metal frames. Another interesting feature are the awning style dual pane windows. They come in either acrylic or glass, but these are far superior to anything you would find in a mainstream motorhome. They do not condensate nor leak hot or cold air. Number seven, they do not always have air conditioning. Despite the superior insulation and heating capabilities, there's a shocking number of these vehicles that are not capable of handling extreme heat, which is even more fascinating because so many of them have redundant heating systems. For example, our rig does not have AC, but we can heat off the Wallace diesel stove the S-Bar Hydronic, in a pinch, we can plug into electricity and use a little AC powered space heater. And in a real pinch, we can even run the engine to uh, transfer heat from the engine to the camper box. You may also have just noticed a pattern of components having dual purposes. For example, our Wallace diesel stove cooktop. Yes, we can prepare food on it and it is an amazing heat source. But another really cool feature is that it dehumidifies the air inside that tight living quarters. So there's a burner, there's combustion air going into the burner. That's your humid air from inside the cab and it gets burned and shot right out the side, which in turn just makes the environment so much more pleasant when you're not dealing with humidity and moisture issues. Another interesting component about our camper is the SPAR Hydronic Heater. The dual purpose function here is it heats the camper and when it's really cold, waking up in the morning, you can heat your engine. Number eight, bigger is not always better. This can be looked at from the obvious perspective of off-road and on-road maneuverability, but think about things like tires. Did you know on LMTV, the military chassis, or even some of the Unimog chassis, a single tire can go for over $2,000. And we were aware of this issue because our vehicle takes regular Yokohamas, which run at about $240 each. Okay, that is a wrap for eight things you do not know about 4x4 off-road truck campers. Thank you so much for watching. I hope there were a few extra takeaways in this video as well. Do me a favor, hit that subscribe button and go to our YouTube channel, Outliers Overland, and start exploring North America from there. Thank you for watching.